Hello everyone, Dr. Zia Tahir here. This video tutorial is solution to problem 1.6 from Mechanical Vibration 6 edition by S.S. Rao. And this, this problem is same in Mechanical Vibration 5th edition. So the problem says, a statement of it is considered a system of two damper with damping constant C1, C2 arranged in parallel as shown in figure. The rigid bar to which the two dampers are connected remain horizontal when f is 0. So when f is 0, so it remain horizontal. Determine the equivalent damping constant Ce, which relate to the applied force as f is equal to Cev. So because the damping constant of two dampers are different and the distances L1 and L2 are not the same, the rigid ball will not remain horizontal when force F is applied. So when that force F is applied, so that will not remain horizontal. So we have to find equivalent spring stiffness in terms of the given parameter, so C1 and C2. Although these arrangement is a parallel arrangement, but because it says that that the bar doesn't remain horizontal, so we cannot use a simple parallel combination to solve this problem. So to solve this problem, first we need to develop some relationships between these forces and damping constants. So starting with like simple is given there, F is equal to CEV and because that F is being acting downward so then one resistive force will be here which I can say that F1 and then one resistive force will be there which I say F2 and this point where the force is being applied I am going to consider that as O. So now F1 will become C1 v1 and f2 is c2 v2 so these are forces in terms of velocities but because it is not horizontal uh, like when the force is being applied so we cannot say that this velocity is is a simple sum of v1 and v2 which are the velocities correspond to damper c1 and c2 so first we need to develop some relationship between these forces and then once the, we got the relationships between the forces so then we can find out equivalent damping constant. So now considering equilibrium in vertical direction so the downward force F is equal to sum of upward forces or applied force is equal to sum of resistive forces so F is equal to F1 plus F2 and F is CEV, F1 is C1 V1 and F2 is C2 V2. Now this is a simple relationship now which relates CE with C1 and C2. But these velocities V1 and V2 they are not known. So we have to find these velocities V1 and V2 in terms of the given parameter which is force L1 and L2. So now further relationship between these forces can also be uh, derived considering rotational equilibrium about point O and rotational equilibrium is sum of clockwise moments is equal to sum of anti-clockwise moment. So if I take O point as rotation point so then I can get that uh, some clockwise moment because here F2 so that will have moment in anti-clockwise direction and F1 sorry sorry F2 that is in anti-clockwise direction and F1 as clockwise direction so then F1 times by L1 so that is a clockwise moment and F2 times by L2 so that is uh, anti-clockwise moment so that is another expression which we can use to develop some further relationships so now 
using equation let's say i am going to say that as equation 1 and then equation 2 so i can write that velocities v1 and v2 in terms of the uh, velocity of the system so then further i can write that f1 and f2 in terms of the given parameters which are the lengths l1 and l2 given so equation 2 can be rearranged to get f2 which is equal to f1 l1 over l2 or to get f1 which is f2 l2 over l1 so now these values of f2 can be substituted in equation 1 so to write f in terms of f1 and then the f1 can be substituted here in equation 1 to write f in terms of f2 so now equation 1 so i can substitute the value of f2 which is f1 l2 so f is equal to f1 plus f1 l1 over l2 so now from here i can take f1 as common factor leaving 1 plus l1 over l2 and then by making denominator same so i'll get that l2 plus l1 over l1 and further i can have that f1 is equal to by just rearranging that f l2 over l1 plus l2 now f1 is c1 v1 so i can rearrange that to get velocity v1 as f1 over c1 so v1 comes as now v1 f l2 over c1 l1 and l2 so this is a relationship if I substitute f here as C E V, so then V can be written in terms of V1 can be written in terms of V. So similarly, I can write that V2 in terms of the parameters which are given F L Fs and Cs and L1 and L. Now again I can substitute F1 in equation 1 so f1 is f2 l2 over l1 so f is equal to this is basically f1 which is f2 l2 over l1 plus f2 so i can take f2 as common factor leaving l2 over l1 plus 1 then making denominator same l2 plus l1 over l1 so f2 is f l1 then over l1 plus l2 so now here i have f2 is equal to c2 v2 so f2 is equal to c2 v2 so i'll get v2 as f2 over c2 so now v2 is f l1 c2 l1 plus l2 so now uh, because i have to use this equation fi to find equivalence so now i write v1 in terms of f in terms of given parameters and write v2 in terms of given parameters now we need to get another relationship that what is the relation of c uh, v velocity with v1 and v2 okay so for that purpose we need to now consider displacements okay so for that purpose i have to draw a free body diagram and draw the free body diagram so that is that rod in its form and now what will happen depending upon c1 and c2 values so it will when the force is being applied so it will tilt okay so we are not sure that if c1 is greater than c2 or c2 is greater than c1 so we are just assuming that like when we are just assuming that so this end where the c is attached the end where c is attached so i am just going to assume that as x1 displacement and then where c2 is attached so it has a displacement of x2 and then the point where uh, the force is being applied so that one i am going to consider as x and then the corresponding lengths are the corresponding lengths 
l1 l2 and then i'm going to consider that it has a rotation theta so now i can have this distance it is x minus x1 and then this distance like when i'm going to draw a horizontal line so it is going to be x2 minus x so uh, and this distance from if i draw another horizontal line uh, where the displacement is x so then the le right end and that horizontal line the distance is x2 minus x1 so now uh, here we'll have this triangle we'll have one triangle here and another triangle here so these are the similar triangles and for those similar triangles tan theta for the triangle here here this triangle so in that say uh, tan theta is x2 minus x1 over x2 minus x1 over l1 and now considering that triangle similar triangle with the length l2 so then that triangle tan theta is x2 minus x over l2 sorry this is x minus x1 here it is x minus x1 so now if we come uh, if we compare both of these two tan theta so then we can develop a relationship between x x1 and x2 so once we have relationship between x x1 and x2 so then we can take their derivative to get another relationship of velocity v then v1 and v2 so now by comparing both tan theta it will become x minus x1 over l1 is equal to x2 minus x over l2 so then we can cross multiply them after cross multiplying so we can simplify them so that is after cross multiplying them and then taking the values uh, a term with x on one side and terms without x on the other side like x1 and x2 so i'll get that x l1 l2 is equal to x1 l1 and l2 so now to write x l1 l2 will be divided onto the other side so then x will become x1 l2 plus x2 l1 over l1 and l2 and then by separating them so l2 l2 over l1 plus l2 x1 plus l1 and then over l1 plus l2 into x2 so then now i can take its derivative so after taking derivative the derivative of displacement is velocity so then i'll get another equation which i'm going to name as equation 5 now in equation 5 so that is the relationship between v v1 and v2 now i have here uh, expression to get v v1 and v2 so i can use these equations so v is equal to f over c1 v1 is equal to f1 over c1 and v2 is equal to f2 over c2 so to write velocities in terms of forces now v is equal to f over ce so that is v is equal to f over ce and v1 i have written here in equation 3 f l2 c1 l1 l2 so from equation 3 i can substitute here v1 and in equation 4 i have v2 so i can substitute that here and now further simplifying it by just multiplying the brackets out so then f over ce that will become f l2 squared over c1 l1 plus l2 squared plus f l1 squared c2 into l1 plus l2 now i can take c f as a common factor from here and after taking f as a common factor so i'll make denominator same and then i'll take reciproc so that is by taking f as common factor and cancelling so that is now the next expression and now i can make denominator same by multiplying here the first uh, uh, dividing first term with c2 and multiplying with c2 and the second term by multiplying with c1 and dividing c1
so then that is a denominator same so when the denominator is same so i can just write them as a single denominator so that is writing as a single denominator and now finally taking its reciprocal so i can find ce so that is by taking reciprocal ce that will become c1 c2 into l1 plus l2 square over c1 l1 squared plus c2 l2 square so this is how uh, you can find equivalent damping constant from the parameters given so it is a quite long question so quickly i am going to give a summary so very simple first we need to find that uh, the force which is being applied so that is equal to the sum of the resistive forces and then i have write that in terms of velocity so now simply to get ce i need to find v1 and v2 so then by considering rotational equilibrium so i find v1 and v2 but still i don't have any relationship between v v1 and v2 and for that one i have considered uh, displacements and using similar triangle so i find out the relationship equation 5 that is the relation between v v1 and v2 now i have already uh, found v1 and uh, v2 using equation 3 and 4 so i'll substitute them and after simplification all the way i can find out here ce so i hope you find this explanation helpful thank you very much for watching